Welcome back to Varnador Films and another game in our series of the college football games that made us. If you're a college football fan that's on Twitter, you probably know of or know my guest tonight, Parker Fleming. You see the Twitter handle there, at Stats of War. You've probably seen something from him. Parker, thanks for joining us to talk about a fun game from your past tonight. Yeah, man, I'm I'm I was so amped to see you do this um, kind of project and talk to other people about games. I'm really excited to hop on and and relive some of my glory days. So this is awesome, man. That's right. And I had to represent. I had to bring up my home field TCU shirt here. Got a Pretty couple. Sure. Of them. They were too nice to to pass up some of the older logos. So I had to break Absolutely. it out for a special occasion. So we're going to be talking tonight about 2009 Utah at TCU. Uh, as soon as I kind of put out the call, this is a game you messaged me about. What is so special about this game to you? Okay, this game was awesome for for multiple reasons. One, it was my freshman year, and so that just always makes everything rosier uh, if you're you know there in person. But it was TCU had game day. It was the era of kind of uncertainty about the BCS Busters. It was really um, two teams that that had for a very short time a really bitter rivalry, really hotly contested games. Just the year before, TCU might have. Um, busted the BCS when when Utah went and played and beat Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. TCU missed a couple field goals in that game, and in uh, up in Utah, it was a very um, kind of heartbreaking experience for TCU fans. And so there was a lot riding on this game. It was number four, number sixteen, a night game in Amon G. Carter Stadium, and game day was on campus. Um, as TCU has moved into the uh, kind of Power Five, they've been to New York Six games. They've been in the conversation for the playoff and for BCS games. Um, it's a little uh, it's a, it's a little easy to forget kind of where they came from. But at this time, TCU was just a random small private school in Texas. And this was really the first big national spotlight for this team that would go on to win the Rose Bowl the next year. Um, and so this this really kind of kicked off TCU's um, uh, announcement party for for joining the Power Five and, and, and sliding into the Big 12. So this was your freshman year. What what kind of brought you to TCU? What made you decide to go there? Yeah, so my um, I, I I'm from deep in SEC country from uh, from Southwest Tennessee, and so a bunch of my friends were were going to SEC schools, and um, I had applied to some SEC schools and didn't necessarily want to go to 13th grade and kind of be in high school again with all those people, and so was looking for some options outside of that. And you know when you um, when you like sign up for the SAT, they make you take the like you can you can fill out, hey, I'm interested in this major, and they put that on they flag that on your database. Well, my my dad filled out my SAT, SAT registration form, not from any sense of like, I couldn't do it. He was just like, oh, I'll just fill this out real quick. And he selected engineering, which I was not interested in at all. But TCU has a pretty uh, pretty strong engineering program. They were, they were looking for students. And so I got mailers that had purple and LaDainian Tomlinson on it. And um, I, I grew up going to the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. And so I had seen TCU play in person before. So knew kind of who they were a little bit, but very weird school, weird mascot. And um, to be frank with you, Seth, I visited uh, and uh, springtime of my senior year in high school, saw girls in sundresses, saw all the nice buildings and uh, thought, hey, if this works out scholarship wise, I would love to come here. And it worked out scholarship wise, fortunately. So was able to kind of make the move from Tennessee to Texas and uh, like like many historical figures and heroes before me, um, go, go down there and kind of go out on my own, a school that I didn't know anybody really at, a school that, that very few people um, that I knew knew about and kind of um, get to have just an entirely brand new Texas experience. That's awesome. I've always been kind of a TCU admirer from afar, being in Florida for most of my life, but seeing like LaDainian Tomlinson, those teams, love the uniforms, the colors. I think it's really in the, the mascot, everything's so unique. Um, always been kind of one I've watched from afar. Uh, but like you mentioned, game day showed up to TCU this weekend and you went to game day. Is that correct? I did. Yeah. They had, they had it out in the, in the quad. So not two years before game day was there, they hadn't finished converting this quad from a parking lot to a big open kind of typical college green space. And they were still working on the building. And so for game day, they put up like foam bricks and stuff on this on this building to make it look like it was nice and done. We I don't think I took classes in there until my junior year, but it was right there on the quad. And and uh, I was living my dorm was you know a three minute walk from from right there, and so it was just a very 
uh, a very special experience to be able to get to do all that. All right, well, let's flash back real quick. We've got some video here from TCU. I love this. I wonder if I see somebody I know in the, in the, yeah, in the preview. Hey okay, pause it. Pause it real quick. Oh, go go back a little bit. Okay. Um, amazing. Amazing. Go back like just a couple seconds there. Um, all right. So both of these guys uh, right there were Fraternity Brothers of Mine. If you see over here the don't back down sign, that mm -hmm. was the TCU Nike campaign. And they really had embraced TCU for the first time. We had new uniforms for this thing. Uh, I'm standing right next to the guy holding the don't back down sign. So I don't know if you could see me in this, but, but that's me right down there. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. There you go. We had another we had another sign that said, uh, what's a Ute? Like um, <laughs> from my cousin Vinny, but they yeah. were like, that's borderline offensive. You can't put that up there. Really? So, All right. Yeah. Is yeah, this you is it here it. on this? Are you on, were you on his right side? Uh, I had long red hair, but I think I was wearing a hat. So I can't exactly mm. make out where I am there, but I'm definitely in that. If you drew a circle, I'm one of those You're guys there. right there. there. Oh, there yeah. Go. Maybe we'll see a clearer picture. <laughs> no, both of those guys real well. That's really funny. No, new, new couple of those girls right there. That's awesome. This is like taking me back. <laughs> oh. They got the real horn lizard, too. That's pretty awesome. Yes, yeah, so you can see the back there. That big building is the one that it's in the back of everything. Is they put like foam bricks on it to make it look <laughs> like it's finished. And then we got what everyone always, what everyone's coming to see here. We've got Corso's pick. So let's take a look here at Lee Cor First, you're going to hear Kirk Herbstreit give some analysis that turns out to not be that correct, talking about the strength of the Utah defense here. Uh, I, think, I think Utah's defense has a chance to keep them in this football game, but Jordan Wynn, a true <laughs> freshman, starting on the road in front of this crowd, is too much for Utah to deal with. TCU is So as Fowler said right there, this was their first visit, first visit ever to TCU. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 I think so. What he said, so TCU had been on it before, but I don't remember which that was. But I do remember that they, but that was the first time they came to TCU. Okay, so y'all, we obviously saw a, a rowdy crowd there. Um, what time? It was. It looked like it was a night game, correct? Yes, yeah. So game uh, game was a game was a night kick because they did fireworks and everything. And there's a pretty iconic photo of I think they did a flyover and there was purple fireworks from the from the top. Yeah. That I that I remember pretty well too. Um, so what's the rest standing of room only the biggest capacity uh, that the stadium had? Like it was, I mean, it was all out. Um, in my mind, in many ways, that's like kind of when TCU became Fort Worth's team. A lot of people when I grew up, or not grew up, but I, as I was going to TCU, were like, "Oh, I'm a Texas fan," but I didn't get into Texas or couldn't make that work, so I came to TCU. Yeah. And I feel like this is one of the games that started to really dissolve those bonds and and turn people into TCU people. So, what was the rest of your day like going from? probably be pretty juiced up during game day then having to yeah. wait until the kickoff what was the rest of your day like so out there pretty early for sure um and then we uh were able to go back to the dorm we napped a little bit we went out to um 
TCU's TCU's tailgate scene is, has been really rough when I was an undergrad. They were still figuring out what to do. They were still worried about, you know, underage people doing doing things they maybe shouldn't have. And so it was really measured. But we still had a tailgate. We had this big old um, grill that was somebody made out of an oil drum. And the first burgers that you cooked on it taste terrible. But the second wave on were pretty, pretty palatable. And so yeah. we went out there and we... Um, you know, we stood and sweat through our clothes in game day, went out to the tailgate, sweat through our clothes then, and then went back to the, went back to the dorm, changed and, and went over to the game. We went to the game pretty early because we wanted to be really close. I think we were in the third, third or fourth row. So it's an um, open and, seating and got, at TCU? Yeah. Yeah. So TCU's student section was at this time just um, one, one section and it kind of went all the way up to the top and it was just kind of stadium seating, no individual seats. Uh, and um and so we, you know, you just kind of get there as soon as you get in uh, and kind of first come first serve. So we got there pretty early to get in there and everybody was wearing the black don't back down kind of t-shirts. Cause I, I do believe that TC did a blackout for this game as well. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now you were in attendance. So oh, a girl passed out at game day. I forgot about that. We had to deal with that. That was one thing we were doing. I remember that um, a girl, she was actually on the broadcast. that so was standing close to us and oh, she right. lived in her hall. And she like didn't drink any water and was standing out there and no. passed out. And we had to get the EMTs and figure everything out while game day was going on. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. Well, she'll never forget it. I'm sure. Now yeah. I'm going back to do, after you sent me this, I did started doing research on the game, started watching as much as I could. You've never, you've never seen the intro to the broadcast, right? No, I mean, I was there and I've rewatched it on Twitter, but I have it or on YouTube, but I haven't like watched the game um on the on the broadcast of like fast forward so i have no idea about that yeah as someone that is a a lover of the advanced stats stats and the analytics uh this one might hit home this one might hit a little close to home for you here so let's listen to the, let's listen to the intro let's here. do it before the first game it starts the media the coaches and the computers all using complex equations to determine a team's fate. But even in a system of votes and computers, a dark horse can still upset the formula. The kick is up. It is not going to make it. It is no good. The Houston Cougars post a 45 to 35 win over the fifth ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. Touchdown to front of the board first. First score of the year. South Carolina knocked off a top five team in Ole Miss and tonight. Your Iowa Hawkeyes are going to do the same thing. The frogs have come to death. Is that Ricky Stanzi? Yeah. <laughs> As the mighty have fallen, the frogs haven't wavered and are knocking on the door of the BCS. Now they face Utah, one team that's cracked the code before. But the polls can't declare who wins on this field under these lights. Tonight, forget the formulas. There are no equations. Awesome. Math is for nerds. <laughs> that is so funny. Math, math is for nerds. You heard it there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Can't football's not played on sheets, <laughs> man. <laughs> that was great. I love that it was like plunky underdogs. Um, Houston and BYU and TCU and Iowa and South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta fit the you gotta fit the narrative here, right? So absolutely, but they the didn't game, mention the Utah game before. Like that was like a heartbreaker for TCU. I mean, they left so many points on the board. They missed multiple field goals. They missed the same kicker missed a field goal in this game. We were all kind of mad to start out, and so I'm surprised that the broadcast wasn't like didn't talk about how TCU would have been in the Sugar Bowl if they had a. Uh, if they hadn't missed uh, missed that against Utah the year before, yeah, I th I think they had a good they had a good little little narrative there, and they wanted to go with it. So now we get to the fun part. We get to watch some plays from the game. Now I don't know if I've pulled your favorites. I've pulled some of the better plays for TCU here, and I'll kind of let you talk over them. Uh, first touchdown of the game here, long run. Watching this back, TCU had a really good plan um, using a lot of motion, and Utah really had no yep. clue how to deal with it. It was, it was very you could see you could see the 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 like where you know TCU Gary Patterson was all about speed baby and you can see on offense how they were very much like we're going angles we're getting outside and they built on some concepts that were pretty pretty cool to watch going back I, I honestly in the stands wasn't as aware of them kind of knew the familiar plays but looking back.
Justin Fuente, who is our OC right here, put on a great, I mean, a great showing. I remember first kind of reading about this TCU team um, through smart football, talking about inverted yep. and power read, because I think they killed Clemson with it. That is, yep. I think it was this uh, year. They did. And so that's kind of, I first got to look at them doing that kind of stuff, but there's a ton of motion. First touchdown of the game here. What do you remember from this? It's early in the game. Shout out to Matt. Shout out to Matt Tucker. Yeah. So I think that was the, that was like the first drive. This was the, you know, we drew first blood kind of, kind of going crazy. They are scoring away. So if you're looking at that, they're scoring um, on the other side of the, the, the student section. And so it was, it was kind of like the eruption over here, but uh, I mean, this one is like Matthew Tucker was kind of the workhorse. This team also started really slow. And so it was really frustrating 2009, 2010 TCU playing against inferior opponents and not kind of sealing the deal early and then having to get a spark later and then eventually putting up a bunch of points. So to score so early on, I think was huge in kind of TCU's confidence um, and, and what happened uh, later just saying like, all right, they got points on the board. There is no slow start. There is no kind of curse thing here. There is, you know, TCU can punch it in. I think you also start to get foreshadowing of their speed in this game. Like TCU has speed that Utah's defense does not. What's really crazy, you see the final score, and then you go back and watch the game. This start, but then this play right here, TCU squandered points quite a few times in this game. It could have been even worse. So this is the ensuing kickoff after the touchdown. Ooh. Eamon Carter erupted. Honestly, in my four years, it never got as loud again as it did right as he hit him and the ball came out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely huge. And then I, I won't even say the kicker's name. He frustrates me so much. But the kicker, they, they missed again. They won. They got in the goal line. They got a penalty. And they they got no points off of this, which is crazy because that's how that's how t- underdogs win is teams don't capitalize on stuff like this. TCU yeah. should have punched this in, but it still turned out to be a blowout. So, yeah, this is one of the ones. That they get the ball at the 15, no points out of it. So if you're Utah, you breathe a huge sigh of relief. Utah goes down and scores. TCU puts another drive together in the first quarter here. And I saw you, I think I was talking about this play on Twitter today. Yeah, I pointed this one out and I pointed out one earlier in the drive here. So one shout out, Ryan Christian, buddy of mine is the wide receiver who catches this here. We, we ran in uh, some, some similar circles. He's a little older, um, which is what's fun about college football. But if you look, this is a, a, I can't tell if it's pre-snap. I think it's a pre-snap RPO. Um, And if you go back to the beginning of the play, um, you see uh, uh, Utah's got six in the box and they've got this, this safety back here is pretty far off. And so Dalton's reading that guy. If that guy comes um, out, he's gonna he's gonna run uh, back one. I think even I, I, I I'm um, not hundred percent sure if he's reading the linebacker or the safety. Yeah, um, but it's a pre snap read, and they ran it earlier. And Dalton had a pretty good run on the draw. And so you see the linebacker and the safety think about the draw. You're able to throw the arrow and get it to a speedy guy in space, and then he makes a couple moves and it's gone. Yeah, you're, uh, so they really built out this concept. Yeah, so you have it looks like you have bubble up here. So you, if you mm-hmm. like the numbers there, you can work it. You've got bubble down here. So if he's off, then my I, I would guess, my guess would be if he's off like this, my eyes here, he doesn't move, take yeah. it all day. And that's what they and do. And because Dalton – and so he stays in because Dalton – Previously, he um, out ran it for like 10 ball. yards earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, three three plays before he he ran that there. And so you it's just cool to look at like the progression and how well TCU planned for. We're not going to line up and just plow through Utah – we're gonna to have to. We're gonna to have to kind of play a little chess match here, and this is this is the chess match. What's also interesting is looking at this uh, when Manzel 2012, uh, 12, right when he won his Heisman, they made a living off of getting an empty and running stick draw with him. And people talked yep. about how revolutionary it was and how Kingsbury was a genius. When you look back here at two thousand nine. TCU's basically doing well. That's the same. That's same. that's not copying TCU. That's Bill Snyder slander, is what that is. Bill <laughs> Snyder's been running the quarterback draw RPO for longer than most of us have been alive. Yeah. Ooh. So it, it's all revolutionary. Okay, I like it's all been done again. Exactly. I, I, Randy Travis, everyone's different, but everyone's the same. This is just another way to say the same thing. Yeah, that's right. Um okay, this this one here is a great way to point out TCU had five or six in the box all night. TCU was able to effectively stop the run and keep five guys, six guys in coverage. It was almost like they were defending the air raid and they really had such an effective pass rush with Wayne Daniels and Jerry Hughes uh, yeah. and, and some sim pressures that they could get Jordan Wynn uncomfortable. Um, there's Jerry Hughes right there, the yeah. number 98. 
I, I was shocked looking at how light of a box TCU had and how well they defended the run and got Utah into these obvious passing situations, and then they were able to disrupt win. That was super impressive. Yeah. When you can get those front four pushing like this, this is something I just going back. I'm watching uh, actually new, you know, last year's Utah team for their game coming up against Florida. They were really good at that, getting pressure of the front four so they could drop up, they could play soft like two man on every third and long because those guys could get home up front. Definitely changes yep. the math a little bit if you those guys can go like this. And that's huge. And, and, and he and was, the- go ahead. He, he's a monster. Um, yeah. And in the run game, when you have a linebacker like Tank Carter, where, you know, you, a guy who's going to fit the run really, really well, if your four guys can kind of make that lane obvious, I mean, yeah, TCU, just this this was a, like a master class. And when everything goes right for Gary Patterson's defense, this is what happens. Um, and now, I mean, Patterson, yeah, Gary Hughes is just. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just said Jerry, Jerry Hughes is like an absolute, just absolute. Great, like so graceful at the defensive end position, playing effectively a linebacker who was, you know, rushing before we really had words for, hey, he's an edge guy, you know, in a, in a three four, he would have been standing up. Yeah. Just, I mean, absolutely changed the equation on defense for them. I remember reading Patterson liked to recruit uh, college or high school running backs, to, and then Jerry Hughes, them. high school running back. Yep, beef them up to play defensive end because of their speed off the edge. So there you go. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Then another big play here on special teams. Get the ball at the 22. Blocked punts. Yep. Then I love they come to this formation on the goal line a couple of times. It's cool. it's the diamond. You see, um, it's it's a little bit different, but you see Gundy do that at Oklahoma State a bunch. And they they ran it to, to Jeremy Curley uh, a lot. My freshman year, we went up to Air Force. Uh, and saw TCU play at Air Force. And and Jeremy Curley's freezing, freezing cold, a little bit rainy. Jeremy Curley ran an end around and there was like seven TCU fans and he came up and jumped in the stands and gave us high fives. We're like, Oh, we're cool. This is the coolest things ever happened. That's him right there. 85. And it's almost like a cheat, like a sprint end around because you just, Hey, say, you know what? We're going numbers and we're going to let our playmakers make a play. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like old school power. eye, and then we're just running a sweep to the right. Yep. They hit this a couple of times on the goal line area. Another big special teams play here. Not a same guy, Jeremy Curley, but big return here. You see, we yep. you see the score is twenty one seven now. It's not getting any better for Utah anytime soon. TCU the, starts the another only, drive the only inside the thirty. Passes that that you Utah completed were like when barely got away and then chucked it downfield. Like they just could not get anything sustainable on offense. Um, here's here's the Andy Dalton end, empty again. And like Mark Johnson said, over the middle, a little bit of speed on this team. Yeah. Is that that's not Bart Johnson, is it? No, that's, 88. that's Jimmy Young again. Yeah, Jimmy Young, but they're going to rule that one short. And this is the Hicks touchdown. So they run, yeah, just a great, good speed, really, really smooth there. And I mean, again, just a little bit faster. That's all. That's all that is. This is a this was a staple for Florida under Urban Meyer. This is one of their favorites. Yeah, running that concept together, opening up a little bit. Really I love there's four Utah guys there. Same thing. That's I think that's Antoine Hicks here. Another really good guy. Really nice guy. I love TC. He was always around. And they run the same thing yep. opposite direction to Antoine uh, Hicks. Yeah. And the versatility there is so, I mean, yeah, just so great with, with what TC was able to do and say, hey, we know what our playmakers are going to do. We can set them up. We, we know how to exploit you. Uh, yeah, just awesome. And then so this if- is when the game. Okay. The game wasn't over yet. We were worried. This is when the game ends. This is, this ask is you, the is this, how does this how does this crowd pop compared to the one on the kickoff? I imagine it's got to be pretty um, close. It was it was really loud. I mean, Tank Carter absolutely like a hometown favorite during during his college years, and and this I mean, just an absolute hey, this is it. Game's over. We know we're going to the BCS. Um, complete there. I, I honestly think the end of game field rush was a little bit underwhelming because there was such an emotional moment like this with, yep, the game is over. Yeah. We're, we're super excited here. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, a fun story about Tank nice. Carter. Let's hear it. Besides, I know uh, you may know him, uh, people, if you don't know him from this, you may know him from his wristbands that he wore all up and down his arm. And Rose Bowl saving play. Um, he, after, after the Rose Bowl, my dad came down to help me pack up for the end of the semester and we went to Buff Bros, which is a great like wings and beer place right off campus. Tank Carter was sitting there and uh, my dad walks over to him like Buddy Garrity. Six months after the Rose Bowl, 
Like what? Like dad walks over like he's Buddy Garrity and shakes Tank Carter's hand while Tank Carter's eating wings. So he like wipes his hand and shakes my dad's hand. And my dad says, son, that was a hell of a game you played. Didn't like specify what game. Six months later, didn't say anything other than that. And Tank Carter was so great. So it was like, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, it was just really, really, really funny that my dad was like, that guy's a TC legend. We have to go talk to him. And I was just sitting there mortified as a little undergrad. Hey, Tank knows. He knew, Absolutely. What, he knew what dad was talking about. All right, so we're in the second half now. Another dart from Dalton. He was really great. His did he just how did he play? How many years did he start there? I remember his junior and senior was it junior and senior year? Was Rose Bowl senior so, year? Yes. So he was there. Um, his his um, early years were kind of contentious. So two thousand nine seems to be a theme that quarterback. Um, he, he t- 2009, he and competed with another quarterback and there was some controversy and there was actually like a pretty strong fan contingency. There's like Andy Dalton will never be the guy. This is dumb that we're playing him. And um, eight, he was a little rocky. And then nine and 10, I mean, he just was the guy and the offense, the offense just perfectly suited him. Um, he hit Bart Johnson. Bart Johnson had a touchdown in the Rose Bowl the next year. Pretty, pretty compelling. Was a really cool kind of redneck of a guy and uh, another fan favorite. There, this team had some NFL guys like Hughes and Curley and and um, and Dalton, obviously, and and I think a couple other in the in the backfield. Uh, Carter went on and played a little bit, but there there were a lot of guys like Clay and. Um, Bart Johnson and Ryan Christian, who were, you know, it almost felt like high school. It was like guys you see in class and you yeah. know, and they're out there on the field competing for your school. And it was just a, is is a cool, it was a cool time in a cool place. Yeah. Here's some of the motion. It just, they did not know how to handle the motion with counter. Good stuff. Yep. This one doesn't go for a touchdown. It goes for a long gain, but you'll, you kind of see think the theme is Utah is not really dealing with motion very well. There's a little bit of the inverted it's, it's veer. It's the speed on the edge. Yeah. Yep. If you can get one guy in the secondary going the wrong way at the beginning of the play, boom, success. Like that's that's all it took. Right there, you can see. Yep, he's just goes done. the wrong way. Yep. As soon as he's there, it's over. Yards. Yep. You just can't get out there. And so right there, you can afford to not block two guys, which means you could block the other guys. And I mean, really simple, really elegant, and just really relied on the guys they had recruited for those roles. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that this looked at is this was a clash of styles between Patterson and Whittingham and Patterson had the guys to execute his style way more than Whittingham did. Yeah. Another kind of jet counter coming back. And again, Utah's yep. totally out of position on the back end. And yep. here you see that speed, which I think about. if you look at the, if you look at the box score, Andy didn't have a great rushing game. Um, they really, they really committed and said, we're not going to let him rush. So, yeah, Andy Dalton had 48 yards, not 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 a lot at all, um, and they they really were afraid of him rushing, and so the running backs were able to feast really really well there. Wrong way. Yep. Oops. Sorry, dude. <laughs> the, the lane you just vacated, and I'm guessing you don't arm tackle this guy right here. Yeah, yeah. That's so. This this was a kind of a a, a, a three headed monster. Um, with Wesley Tucker and Turner, there were some injury issues. And so they weren't always healthy, but they were three just super dependable, super consistent, super durable um, um, backs. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're not guys that you can, you know, reach up and grab a Jersey and pull them down. Interesting. So they do the, they do the motion here, which gets him. They also run like split zone action, which holds yeah. him too. So watch, watch these guys or him right here. Watch him get held by this tight end coming back across. Yep, just takes and one half, one half of a step there, and now it's over. Yep, and if you if you go back to go back to that one again, because this is this is something that kind of carries over in the modern what they, what they've done. Oh my god! Um, so if yeah, so if you look if you look at the beginning of the play, the the nose is on the opposite side. Um, and so what TCU did a lot in like 2018, 2019, as they were kind of trying to get back to this magic was like, oh, the split zone gave our fast running backs the, the opportunity to get the lane. And so they would like uh, option or uh, audible the play to flip sides and bring the tight end to the overside so that that nose tackle was on the inside shoulder of the center so they could run the split zone comfortably. But like there was, I mean, they loved this so much and Gary Patterson had it in his mind, like, Oh, if we can run the split zone, our running backs can get open that even in, you know, 2018, 19, 20, they were, they were still audibling at the line to flip the formation 
and try and attack the nose that way. Yeah. Well, it works here. And that's kind of the last highlight I have. 55 points at this point. A real drubbing. Pretty awesome. We we stormed the field. We were chanting BCS. Um, life was breezy, man. The the suits hadn't ruined it for us. You know, Nebraska didn't have a second left on the clock yet, or um, it was you know it's our uh, against Texas, and 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 we thought we were going to go win the national championship. Um, it was it was a really really high point for for TCU football and for all the students that were out there. I'm I'm a little nostalgic seeing some of those guys in the. Uh, uh, in the in the preview video and the game day footage, just guys I knew and 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 freshman year and that kind of special bond that comes with being on campus with strangers and just getting to know people because you're in the same place. It's pretty great. Yeah, and that's kind of why we're doing this because it's with the future of college football seemingly becoming so corporate. It's nice to kind of just go back and my the game I picked my first game was the the 1993 season 1994 Sugar Bowl when it was really a big deal to make the Sugar Bowl. Florida made the Sugar Bowl yeah. for, I think, the third time ever, and it was a huge deal just to make it there. That was one of their goals every year, make the Sugar Bowl, because that meant you were the SEC champion. So now you guys are opting out of the Sugar Bowl, which I, you can't blame them because, you know, they got to save themselves for professional careers, but, you know, there's no incentive for them to play when all we talk right. about is the playoff. So. Right. The incentive structures are different. It's a different time and we're working on the sport, but we do have these moments where in time, you know, we're, we're there and we realize this is what's truly great about college football and no amount of Kirk Herb street talking about the playoff or um, the suits trying to maximize conference revenue and all that can take that away from us. So um, even, even if they do completely hollow it out and make a 16 team playoff and the regular season, they say doesn't matter. We as fans can still treasure these moments and remember that college football is about Saturdays uh, on, in the fall on campus. That's, that's what's the best of it. And so they can't take that away from us. Listen, as somebody that's covering Florida and USF, I'd love to go back to the late aughts. That's, that was a lot more fun time to cover those teams. I can assure you that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Parker, thank you for coming on and talking about your favorite game. Uh, if anybody else wants to talk about their favorite game, hit me up on Twitter at Seth Varnador. Uh, I'd love to come on, have people on talk about a variety of games. It also will help me expand my home field collection here. I think I have a home <laughs> field shirt for, for at least one team in every game I've covered so far. So nice. that'll help out again, Parker. Thanks so much guys. If you like this, uh, subscribe, comment, Parker, where can people find you on, not just on Twitter, but tell them, um, your site and where else they can find you. I know you're doing, you guys, you do an awesome, uh, weekly YouTube show with Gary and Kyle, right? That's really yeah, super yeah. Gary Kyle and I are on the on the Bet US channel, um, doing doing some picks and previews. We should be starting that back up here in a couple in a couple weeks, um, and kind of doing uh, a little bit more gambling centric, but also we really try and break down the matchups and explain our thinking. And so it's a really informative show. Gary and Kyle are super smart. Uh, right for Football Outsiders on Monday, the One Foot in Balance column, and then if you're a stats nerd like me, in addition to what I post on Twitter, cfb-graphs.com like a hyphen cfb-graphs.com is the stats website. I'm currently in the process of ramping that up, making that a little more official and putting some more stuff up there that should be useful for you. So uh, check that out and, and and stay tuned for that as well. Yeah. If you're a college football fan of any kind, you need to follow Parker. He puts out weekly previews of games and, and you kind of get a good sense of how to go into games, understanding where team strengths really are based on the numbers. And then him, Gary and Kyle do a really good job breaking it down from really three different perspectives. Uh, I really enjoy hearing how Kyle differs from you and how Gary's kind of differs from both of you guys. So really good show. Check that out. One more time, thank you for coming on. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll be back next week probably with a Utah preview for Florida's game in Utah. And then we may get one more college football games that made us looking at Nebraska, Colorado, the 2001, the game that basically killed Nebraska football. Yeah. So, <laughs> they, that, there was a stat they had like a their winning percentage before that game was over 700 or, or their, their average is over 700 after that game it's closer to 500 so it's there's it's a real demarcation point so yeah. it'll be interesting to go back and look at that one <laughs> thanks for watching we'll be back later on with more go frogs